to model the AC behavior of an operational amplifier, I still keep the assumption of an infinite input impedance, and I also still keep the assumption that we have zero output impedance, drawn by an open and a short in these two places. Furthermore, the gain of the amplifier is still modeled as a controlled source where the output voltage, the voltage of that source, is controlled by the differential input voltage Vd. But instead of having an infinite gain now between output voltage and Vd, I'm modeling the gain of the source as a limited DC gain A of the operational amplifier. And the dominating pole that we have seen from the MOSFETs is represented by a first order low pass filter. Now that low pass originates in the dominating pole from the capacitor in the MOSFETs and also for all the resistances or the GM values of the used transistors. So it is an effective pole and the physical origin of it is distributed among various components. I'm calling the corner frequency of that filter omega C. When we operate that operational amplifier in an open loop constellation, that means there is no feedback around it. We got the input voltage across its input terminals and we refer the output voltage to a ground. Therefore, the transfer function results in a DC gain here. At the corner frequency, the voltage gain is down by minus 3 dB, which corresponds to half of the power at the output for a given impedance. And then we can define the transit frequency, which is the frequency at which the operational amplifier is running out of gain, and it has 0 dB gain, or linearly that means the output voltage is equal to the input voltage. The gain bandwidth product is the multiplication of that DC gain with that corner frequency and is characteristic for each specific amplifier. At the corner frequency, the phase shift is minus 45 degrees and at the transient frequency, the phase is approaching minus 90 degrees. Another way of using an operational amplifier is to feed its output back into the non-inverting input. This constellation is called a buffer amplifier. Now to calculate the output voltage of that amplifier, we can use the gain, the transfer function that we previously derived as a first order low pass filter and multiply it with the differential input voltage of the operational amplifier. That differential input voltage is the voltage from the non-inverting input with respect to the inverting input. And looking at Kirchhoff's voltage law, we have the input voltage on the non-inverting input with respect to ground, and we have the output voltage with respect to ground, where the output voltage also is directly connected to the inverting input of the amplifier and that describes Kirchhoff's voltage law in the loop over here. To get the transfer function, we can solve that equation for the output voltage and in the next step, we can simplify the equation by multiplying on both sides with the denominator of the fraction over here and also up here. Therefore, we end up with the output voltage being multiplied with this gain and the input voltage multiplied with that gain. And finally, we can from that create the ratio of the output voltage divided by the input voltage, which are the two gains that are left in the equation above. Finally, we can extract the DC gain A over A plus 1 from both the numerator and the denominator, which leaves us with the first order low pass equation for the AC behavior of the buffer amplifier. 
the gain of the amplifier is the same as the DC gain here in front of the fraction, which describes the low pass behavior. And the bandwidth is in the new pole, which now is A plus 1 multiplied with omega C. From those two parameters, we can finally calculate the gain bandwidth product for our buffer amplifier where we have the DC gain from the previous slide to be A over A plus 1, and the bandwidth was A plus 1 multiplied by omega C. And we can see that the gain bandwidth product stays the exact same as we had for the open loop operation. Furthermore, that means even if we include a feedback network, we would never be able to exceed the gain bandwidth product of the given device and we would always be limited to stay within the transfer function of the device given as the DC gain and the low pass behavior until it reaches its transition frequency. With the operational amplifier configured as a buffer, we get a new DC gain which is lower than the open loop gain and we get a new corner frequency a plus 1 multiplied by omega c, and as I'm plotting f here, on the x-axis we need to divide by a factor of 2 pi. The amplitude stays within the boundaries given by the device, but the minus 45 degree phase shift has moved to the new corner frequency. Now let's have a look at an example, in this case the MC33. 078 operational amplifier, which is designed for audio use. In data sheets, the transfer function is also often called the gain phase diagram. From the gain, we can see that it has 60 dB gain as the low frequency gain, which is a very representative number for many operational amplifiers. Some have also 80 dB. The conditions under which these measurements were taken is plus and minus 15 volts supply voltage. The operational amplifier was loaded with 2 kilo ohms and it was operated at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. All of these parameters have an influence on the behavior of the operational amplifiers and if you operate them in different regions, that will change the behavior of the op amp. From the diagram, we can read the corner frequency here at 20 kilohertz. And that is where the gain is approximately 3 dB down. And the phase is approximately minus 45 degrees. But for frequencies going towards infinity, the phase is not stopping at minus 90 degrees, but continues even further towards a negative phase. The reason for that is that we so far only have modeled the operational amplifier as a low pass behavior, but on top of that, there are also time delays in each of the stages that we have looked into. And as we know from the Laplace transformation, a time delay can be modeled as an exponential function with minus the delay times the complex frequency s in the argument. For the phase representation in the transfer function, that means that the phase is actually continuing linearly towards minus infinity. The gain continues to fall with minus 20 dB as we have predicted by our modeling through our first order low pass approach.